Hello everyone, Francis McShane here uh, and I'm going to show you my new extension which draws, or models rather, uh, dodecahedra, the four main dodecahedra. Uh, just to make it a bit more fun, I thought I'd turn them into little Christmas decorations since it's that seasonal time of year, it's coming up to Christmas soon. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to decorate this Christmas tree with them. Um, and it shows you some of the features of the, of the, the extension. So when you've it installed, you'll find it um, under dodecahedron, under extensions, dodecahedron, create a dodecahedron. I uh, will just accept the basic stuff here. I will pop that on there for now. And as you can see, that is a, a regular dodecahedron. I will um, edit that now quickly, quite quickly into a Christmas decoration. It's too big, so we'll take it down in size. I will give it a nice Christmassy color. Um, this uh, set of choices here lets you um, change the shape or the deform the shape from a regular dodecahedron into um, a thing called a peritic and even all the way down uh, to uh, a rhombic and even all the way down to a cube dodecahedron. I can show you that uh, very quickly. Uh, at the minute it's the golden ratio minus one which is the, uh, the absolute regular dodecahedron. Uh, if I make it one you can see that it becomes rhombic and um, if I make it not it becomes cubic and it, it kind of goes you can play with it yourself but you'll see that it'll, it'll move all the way from um, cubic like that to, to rhombic right through to the, uh, the uh, I'll show you one of the peritic ones they're, they're quite interesting as well point eight for instance uh, that kind of looks like a normal, except you see that it's squished uh, and these edge lengths aren't um, the edge length you gave it anymore, they're, they're kind of, uh, they've been deformed. So I'll just finally let it become completely regular, you know, so golden ratio minus one. Uh, and that gives you a completely regular uh, dodecahedron. And it looks quite a nice bauble in that Christmassy colour. We'll put a, a string on it to attach it to the tree the whole thing into a group so we can do that and just start hanging it on the tree Sure, you can uh, do this far more creatively than I can, uh, but no, well, kind of gives you the idea. <coughs> so uh, no Christmas tree is complete without its star on the top. So we'll use one of the stellated forms to make the star, and that's the great stellated form. We'll pop it on there, and um, in white it's a bit boring, so we'll give it a slightly nicer color. Gold looks nice, yeah. Now I'll make some more Christmas decorations. Go for the small stellated. And uh, I'll just quickly show you that spikiness factor thing again. Uh, it comes with a, a standard spikiness factor of one. Um, <coughs> basically what that means is that if I was to connect all these points up uh, I would uh, turn this into uh, a regular icosahedron. Um, whereas if I make, uh, and also it means, sorry, it also means that these five pointed stars, I think you can see there's a five pointed star there, are all in one plane, they're all planar. Uh, but if I make it spikier, it pulls the spike out so then these stars are no longer planar. They kind of stay. Well, I'll show you what it does. Quite nice if I do it. So I think you can, you can just about see that these five-pointed stars here all kind of lean in a wee bit. Uh, I'll go the whole hog and do it three. Uh, oops. I think you can see that they are kind of 
definitely leaning in. They're not that that isn't in the same plane as this. It's not in the same plane as that, and so on. So I'll just go back to kind of like the uh, factor one. Uh, it's a bit big the whole thing. I will give it some user defined colors. And then what user defined colors means is I can actually sort of just go around and um, change the colors of faces, the colors as I want them. I'm just doing these pretty randomly to be honest, but uh, just to show you the idea. Now, um, there is a little issue with this aspect of the program, and that is that <coughs> it just retains the colors that you've put in. So if I edit it again, they won't actually necessarily show up on the same faces. It doesn't record which face it went on. It would just kind of generally keep the colors. So what will happen is all these colors will just become uh, attached to um, faces one after another as they're, uh, but at least you'll have the same color. So if you say you went to the trouble of changing all of these faces to colors, uh, to a color palette you wanted. Um, you, if, they, if you go to re-edit it, it will remain in that color palette, but I won't, it doesn't actually guarantee that the individual face you made an individual color will remain that color. That it's not that clever. And I'll show you that now. I haven't colored all the faces, I've only colored some of them. And if I um, edit it, say make, this, make it point 0.3 in size, what you'll find is that the, the locations were, oops, Go back again. I don't know where that was. Where is it? Where it is. You'll find that the locate the faces upon which the colours are located have kind of got scrambled up, moved around. <coughs> but they are the same. They will be the same colours that you you chose before. So they have this brown and this gold and this um, these different uh, different colours that, that I picked before. So the colour the colour palette remains the same. Just the actual faces they want aren't quite the same. I'll just turn this into a bulb. Actually, what if do is I keep the whole thing at a nice, maybe a silver colour. And then put a, put a thing here, a string on it. Let me put these on the tree. So that, that's useful if you want a certain colour palette. Actually, that's rather big, isn't it? I think I'll shrink that down. You have to click into the group you want it because it's obviously um, it's inside a group now so, but you, you can click in and, and edit it so it was three we'll take it down to two or even even slightly smaller 1.5 half that size and I'll have to shift it up to its string like that so that's it that's a little better colour and a few more on the tree And then finally we have the the great dodecahedron. There it is. And the great dodecahedron is <coughs> you can either think of it as being a set of big pentagons like this, which are kind of turned. Um, and I think there's twelve of them in total. And um, or you can think of them as these little triangles. Dish, which dish into sort of three triangles, and these are then laid out in an a uh, on an icosahedral kind of uh, solid, uh, platonic solid. Um, either way, uh, it's one of the dodecahedra, and um, I'll just show you the last color editing thing we have, which is random. As you can see, it quite nicely colors the whole thing up for us. Uh, make it a bit smaller. This is the biggest of the dodecahedra, so I'll take it right down to one. Put a string on it. And add it to the tree. A 
is that you could probably do this much nicer than I can. Take much nicer colors, but it shows the principle. Oops, this one isn't even on the tree. And then put the whole tree into your room. Like that. And I can admire it within the room. Like that. Better if I didn't have it picked. There you go. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you thought that was fun.